Bingo, we're back. It's Monday. Wow. And here we are on energy. It's um, um, Marco Mangelsdorf and me on Monday. Mina can't make it today. So the two of us are charging ahead on energy here in Hawaii. Nay. Good morning, Marco. How are you? Well, to paraphrase, I think it was Harry Belafonte. A beautiful bunch of ripe energy issues. Way oh, way oh. Stay in energy. Showbiz is not not the way for you yet. <laughs> You're very kind. Thank yeah, you. I am. I'm, I am very kind. <laughs> I need all the I need all the discouragement I can get. Thank you. I'll help you. Okay, Thank so you. let's talk about. Uh, uh, let's see, DER. Let's talk about the state of play in the distributed energy resources docket, where the PUC had issued an order stating that it's time, it's time to move to phase two. What does this all mean, Marco? Well, we had a decision, um, an order from the Public Utilities Commission last Monday, the 3rd, and it was essentially uh, opening the gate, the starting gate for what was described back uh, October of last year, almost a year ago. Uh, in their ruling uh, a year ago when they decided to f officially bring net energy metering to a close, that uh, the new programs to follow net energy metering, customer grid supply and customer self-supply, were part of uh, what they described as phase one. And now they are stating uh, as of last week that uh, they are requesting all the parties, the interveners on this docket, that they have 10 days I'm not sure if they're business days or calendar days, but 10 days to essentially tell the commission uh, what their views are, their suggestions in terms of proceeding into phase two. So there are the usual suspects, uh, the consumer advocates, the Hawaiian electric companies, of course, uh, various uh, energy stakeholders, including the solar groups, uh, Ulupono and uh, Blue Planet, uh, amongst others, who will have the chance to uh, pipe up in their filings uh, to be coming in the days to come as far as where where to go. And uh, the reason I think this is especially important right here and now is that the customer grid supply caps, which were established by the commission a year ago under phase one, a cap of a maximum of 25 megawatts for Oahu, five megawatts each for Hawaii County and Maui County, that those caps have now all been reached on their respective islands and we in the industry and those uh, homeowners of which uh, 80 or 80 more percent of uh, those who owned single family homes who do not have solar PV uh, the the options right now are, are much more limited uh, based on the caps being reached the option being the main option being uh, something known as customer self-supply which does not allow does not allow for any export surplus uh, PV power to be fed into the grid and instead essentially requires the use of uh, battery storage and the battery storage, uh, according to my deep dive into residential battery storage right now, uh, the, the options are rather limited and uh, they're rather expensive. So yeah, you very are, nearly double your expense uh, by getting battery storage there. So it's not, it's not really an attractive option. On the other hand, um, you know, it seems to me that getting out of NEM was probably a good idea. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was elements of fairness about it and elements of let's move ahead with this thing. But, you know, query, uh, what, is, what is phase two? What is it supposed to be? And why, why is the PUC asking the crowd, if you will, you know, the regular crowd, so to say, that you identified, uh, for ideas on it? Why don't they just come up with something and then, and then feel that, you know, for comment instead of... I mean, are they asking them to come up with an idea here? That's no way to regulate, is it? Well, I mean, it's not just the, the crowd, so to speak. It is the, the officially approved interveners on the distributed energy resources docket who are very much part of the proceedings in terms of shaping what the next uh, decision and order will be uh, regarding phase two. And it really has to do with... Uh, it's one of the, the, the big four, as they call them, uh, as far as the outstanding energy dockets before the commission right now, the big four being DER, Distributed Energy Resources, the Power Supply Improvement Plan being number two, and that's uh, also known as the PSIPs for short. There's uh, 
another docket dema- that's regarding demand response, and then finally there's a decoupling. Decoupling being that uh, as of a number of years ago, utility profits were not tied to uh, utility kilowatt hour sales. So this is one of the big four, the DER docket. And the reason it's, it's really very, very important to those of us in the industry and also to, to the buying public in Hawaii is because it's going to determine what options uh, that home and business owners have as far as being able to install a renewable energy or a photovoltaic system on their roof or in their yard or on their, on their property, um, what type of options they will have in terms of being able to interconnect to their local utility company and what the interconnect agreement terms and conditions will be. So it's, 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 it's a very, very critical time I right I won't argue that. Certainly it is very critical. Um, but, you know, uh, the PUC knocked off uh, um, NEM a year ago, and, uh, it's, you know, it's been very quiet on that. And um, essentially nothing has happened for, you know, replacement of NEM. Um, and I suppose you have to say, I think you said this at one time, NEM is dead, so long live NEM. Uh, there right. has to be a successor to NEM. Um, and, there, you know, like there's, there's, you know, the sound of silence here for a year. And now uh, they want uh, the crowd, forgive me, but the, that crowd, the intervener crowd, to come in with ideas. Why don't they come up with an idea? Why didn't they come up with an idea six months ago uh, or more? Why, why does everything take so long? Forgive me for asking, but I'm sort of the John Q. Everyman. Why does everything take so long? I can't speak to that, Jay. That's something that Randy Awase, uh, Tom Gorak, and uh, Lorraine Akiba are much more in a position to address that uh, rather than me. But uh, I think the, your overall point as far as how long things take sometimes is, is very well taken. And my concern is that it could easily be easily four, six, eight months, or perhaps even longer, before a phase two roadmap is, number one, decided on amongst the parties, and two, a phase two uh, is actually implemented. And in the course of four, six, eight, or longer months, uh, a lot can happen. A photovoltaic industry can live and die uh, in that period unless we were to be given some type of what I'll describe as interim relief, the interim relief being an interim order, which is what I would wish for if I had my druthers, uh, for a, uh, an increase in the customer grid supply cap that would be essentially uh, implemented immediately. Well, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I, that would have been the same segue I would have made, uh, that in this period, you know, you had installers going, going, going bankrupt. Um, and the whole industry, I mean, I, I saw a chart on uh, Oahu PV permits issued. Oh, it's way down. And that must mean the installers are, are, are eating grass already, or eating stones, as the case may be in the Bible. They, they got nothing going on because there is no NEM2. Um, and so, you know, this is not without effect, this kind of delay. It's costing some guys their business and their livelihood. Um, let me ask you this, Marco. If, if I made you a uh, queen for the day, and I made you an intervener with the power, you know, the, to make some very influential statement on what to do for phase two, what would you do? Did you say if you made me queen for a day, Jay? Yeah. That was the old TV show. I, I don't think I would fit in those tight shoes with the stiletto heel, so I think I, I would be much more comfortable being prince, <laughs> prince for a day. Okay, I just want to get that straight, Your Honor. My, my, my first decree is as prince, energy prince of the realm, would be to issue a more or less immediate order that would, uh, number one, increase uh, the uh, existing NEM caps for HECO, HELCO, and MECO, which, as I said earlier, have already been reached, the most recent one being for Oahu, which was reached a couple of weeks ago. I would increase those caps, uh, number one, and second, I would reduce or lower 
the credit value for those uh, surplus kilowatt hours, those exported solar kilowatt hours from the existing rate of 17 cents and change for uh, the Big Island and for Maui and 15 cents and change for Oahu, I would reduce that by uh, some type of reasonably defensible amount of several pennies to more uh, get closer to what is the avoided cost rate, a kilowatt hour rate, uh, which is tied to, uh, typically tied to the price of oil, which is still you know, somewhere in the right around sub $50 a barrel mm -hmm. range. So if you were to give me princely powers to do that, Jay, that would be my first decree. Okay, well, I think that's good. But, you know, um, how, how do you justify establishing these caps based, on, I assume, on, you know, legitimate uh, analytics where we, you know, take our best technology and we establish the cap and it's serious because it affects people's livelihoods and all that. And everybody was so ticked off, so you establish the cap. And then a few months later, whoops, oh, we were only kidding. That's not the cap at all. We're going we're gonna to move the cap. How, you know, how, how does that work? I mean, uh, if I was looking at it from the outside, I would wonder how real the cap was in the first place. Well, it's an excellent question, Jay, and the question begs the following question, which is how much additional PV generating capacity can our isolated islands accommodate? Oh, what I mean by that is how much additional uh, PV generating capacity that can export to the grid versus uh, additional capacity that is only supplying power to that individual load, the load being at a home, the load being at a business. So how much more exportable PV capacity can the Helco, Hiko, Miko, and KIUC grids, for that matter, how much more can they accommodate in today's grid of 2016, not the grid of tomorrow, not the smart grid of X years from now, but today's grid and the near-term grid. And the answer to that question, in terms of a precise numerical value, is not knowable as far as I know, not being a utility engineer or electrical engineer. But the, my utility friends tell me that they have some, uh, some general ideas, not to the to the KW, not, not to the single watt basis, not to the nth degree and decimal point, but have a general idea that Oahu can handle X number of more megawatts. And I don't know what that is off the top of my head. The Maui grid can handle additional X more megawatts. Big Island can handle X more megawatts. So that would be used, should be used as a guide in terms of whatever additional cap room were uh, to be provided by the commission, and again, I, I don't—I'm not into the devil, the, the devilish details on this because it's not easy, necessarily easy to do. But come up with some type of interim number, whether it's another five megawatts for this island, another five megawatts for Maui, another 25 for Oahu. I don't know, but my my intuitive hit, Jay, based on what I do know, is that if those caps were to be in effect doubled to go for an additional five here, an additional five for Maui County, additional 25 for Oahu, I believe that those numbers would not be pushing the grid uh, system-wide for those islands into what I'll call the red zone. I believe that to be the case, but I don't have the data in front of me to necessarily support that. Yeah, I'd, I'd sure like to see, you know, the, you know, the algorithms on the basis of which the caps were established and uh, to, uh, you know, update them for changes in circumstances and use and who knows what. Uh, and then, you know, find a formula. Find a formula to say what they should be from all that we know and then share the formula. That's what I, that's what I would do. But on the other hand, I am neither queen uh, nor king nor prince in this department. And with that in mind, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. That's Marco Mangelsdorf and me, Jay Fidel, here on a Monday talking about energy. We'll be right back. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, ThinkTechHawaii.com. I appear on Mondays at 3 o'clock, and my gig is energy efficiency, doing more with less. It's the most cost-effective way that we in Hawaii are going to achieve 100% clean energy by the year 2045. I look forward to being with you. 
Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you. What the science really means to your life, its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Likeable Science. We're back, we're live, and I can only think after our discussion during the break that what Hillary should have said to Donald Trump last night is, Donald, you're no Abe Lincoln. You see, I knew Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln was a friend of mine. I've, I've, I've had tea with Abe Lincoln, and Donald, you're no Abe Lincoln. <laughs> you're, Donald, you're no Abe Lincoln. <laughs> well, moving on to PSIP, um, what does that stand for? What is it? And... Uh, how long? That's been around for a long time, too, hasn't it? What does it mean to us? What does it mean to the DER issues we've been talking about? Well, you, 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 you threw in a whole bunch of questions there, uh, Jay, so let me try to pick them off one at a time. So the, the Power Supply Improvement Plan, or plans, go back to their predecessors uh, known as uh, IRP, or Integrated Resource uh, Planning, IRP. Uh, and this has been going on for years and years, at least ever since I've been doing solar pretty much full-time here in Hawaii for more than 16 years now. The utilities had regular IRP rounds, integrated resource planning rounds, uh, in terms of trying to come up with uh, how all the pieces of their uh, electric grid were, were supposed to play nicely together and take into account uh, putting out to pasture, so to speak, generation, which was essentially cost to... Uh, ineffective and too expensive and bringing on new cheaper generation right and trying to keep costs down for ratepayers and if not lower costs ideally but we of course haven't seen really many of that mm -hmm. so a number of years ago the irp process essentially morphed into a new acronym known as the uh, power supply improvement plan or psip or psip for short but it's the same and general idea isn't it it's the portfolio yes yes it's essentially a, uh, a rather important, if not critical, roadmap that the utility, the Hawaiian Electric Utilities, uh, come up with as far as this is how we see the future developing on each of our five islands where we have uh, uh, these isolated electric grids. The future developing as far as greater reliability, uh, better performance in terms of, well, reliability is high in general, has been quite high overall. But uh, shifting over to more renewable generation, cost-effective renewable generation, and just moving forward to where everybody in the state pretty much agrees that we need to move forward to, which is more renewables, cheaper power. And have that, of course, be reflected in, in rate pair rates, stabilizing, if not going down. So the commission under the PUC, under uh, former chair uh, Mina Marita, and uh, Mike Champley, who's no longer there, and Lorena Kiba, who's still there, I mean, they were very activist. I would describe them as a commission uh, under, under me and his tenure to try to provide a, uh, a roadmap themselves as far as where they thought the Hawaiian Electric companies needed to go. So just to kind of bring us up to, to the present uh, time, the Hawaiian Electric companies uh, are now working on what I call REV3, uh, the third revision of the PSEPs because Rev, REVs 1 and REVs, REVs 2 submitted to the commission and to the other stakeholders were found essentially to be uh, inadequate. And the commission gave feedback and uh, said you need to essentially do a better job. Uh, and now all eyes are on the REV 3 submission of the power supply improvement plans for HECO, HELCO, MECO which are due to the commission by the 1st of December. And There's been uh, some extensions on that, right? It was supposedly in August originally, I think, wasn't it? Uh, uh, that could be the case, uh, but uh, this is something I know that uh, the Hawaiian Electric folks, uh, the teams there at Hiko, Helco, Miko are putting a fair amount of time and effort into right now, sure. trying to come up with the, the third rev of the PSIPs that they have to submit not too many weeks from now to the commission and uh, hoping, of course, very much uh, that the, the n this next uh, submission is going to find, uh, shall we say, better favor 
by the the commission and then that remains to be seen of course until they submit something and well now what we do know for sure is that the the folks from uh, Juno Beach Florida and otherwise known as Nextera they are gone in a big way after having been denied the keys to the kingdom queendom princedom princessdom back on July 15th so they're gone and they were of course very much in the mix over the past, over the year year and a half two years that they were involved and also we know what's going to happen with LNG because part of the 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 the, the acquisition between or the acquisition of HEI from Nextera uh, very much involved uh, liquefied natural gas, which, of course, is opposed by the governor, opposed by a number of the energy stakeholders. And I'd be very surprised if if the third iteration of the piece of from White Electric was doubling down on LNG. I think uh, I think that's most likely off the table. The LNG is, is gone, 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 at least for now, now, now. So there have been a number of new twists since the last piece of submission PSIP number two. So, what are they kind of going to come up with in PSIP number three now that uh, Nextera has been sent away, and now that LNG most likely has been has been sent away as well? Mm. I mean, again, the focus has to be on making us more energy independent at and at a cost effective rate, not not renewables at, at any cost, but cost effective renewables to be able to go where everyone says we need to go. And there are many ways to that to that promised land, to the land of Oz, right, Jay? I mean, uh, you get a number of energy stakeholders in the room and try to ask them to come up with a consensus. At least my experience here in the state is that that's like herding kitty cats, uh, you know, without having adequate meow mix. So no, it, hasn't, it hasn't worked. I mean, it, and it's cost so much time. And this and this current um, you know process on PSIP reminds me of a a kind of negotiation in business. Uh, where you say, um, how much do you want for your business? And uh, they say, uh, uh, or how much are you willing to pay for your business? And they say, we're, we're willing to pay $100 million. I said, well, that's not enough. Um, what's, what's your next offer? And then, it's, well, we're willing to pay $150 million. Well, that, that's not enough either. What's your next offer? And it's like, you know, serial offers uh, with not acceptances. And the fellow who makes serial offers is usually wasting his time. And it, from a legal point of view and a strategic point of view, it's a bad idea to get involved in a process with serial offers. Um, you know, for example, why doesn't the PUC say, here are the parameters, and no, you can't include LNG. We've made a, uh, you know, a substantive policy decision about that. So don't waste your time on LNG, or do waste your time, whatever it is. You know, and give them hard parameters to follow so they don't wind up making serial offers into the blind. And I think that's what's happened. It takes a long time to do that because, you know, it's like keep coming, keep offering more, keep coming, and then ultimately we'll let you know when it's enough. Um, you know, some, somebody was talking about, we, 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 we often speak of, the, um, of the, uh, the utility of the future and what it would look like. You know, I'm sure you've thought about that as being part of HIEC. Um, and... Um, you know, I, I wonder, shouldn't the question be turned also on the PUC? What does the PUC of the future look like? Have we compared well, our PUC with other PUCs? Is there a better way to do this? Well, I mean, I think a lot of people would go back to the so-called inclinations paper from the commission back in 2014, where they really provided uh, a, a vision and a roadmap of where they saw, this is they being Mina, Mike Champley, and Lorena Kiva, where they saw the need or the direction that the Hawaiian Electric Companies needed to go in. So, I mean, they provided a, a rather bold and, and ambitious uh, roadmap uh, in, in terms of these, the, the inclinations paper, and uh, to what extent, with a new makeup of the commission now, with Randy being there, not Mina, and with Tom Gorick being there, not Mike Champley, to what extent this commission feels uh, bound or attached to the inclinations paper, I don't know, but I know Chair Randy Wasse has made reference to the inclinations paper. Yes, he has. Well, he made it, reference it, to that on, on when he appeared on our show a few weeks ago, yeah. That's well, with the, with the implication that, for, that I got from Mr. Wasse being that he still sees a substantial amount of value mm -hmm. and importance in the inclinations paper. 
So, I mean, but, you know, you, you like to use the, the too many cooks in the kitchen metaphor, Jay, and, you know, whether it's cooks in the kitchen or, or captains on the deck, I mean, it, we truly have uh, you know, a number of, you know, heavyweight energy players in the state that uh, most of the time or a lot of the time are not on the same deck and not on the same uh, sheet music uh, or, or on the same, you know, cookbook. They have different cookbooks, so... Realistically, as a political scientist and an energy player as well, in a, in a small way, from Little O Hilo, uh, I see intrinsically you know, substantial challenges in our state to try to get enough of the important stakeholders on the same plane, the same page, to be able to move forward, number one, and move forward in a, an expeditious way. Well, it's kind of forget about it. It's just kind of the nature of the game that... Uh, Trying to get things done quickly here, it's just, uh, I, I, you know, it takes a, a long, long time. I mean, it was, again, December 3rd, 2014, when Hawaiian Electric and Next Year announced they were going to move forward. And then in the next month, they, they submitted their 300-plus page document to the commission, the merger agreement, the acquisition agreement. And then it took a year and a half after that for a decision to be made. I don't think we can afford to move this way. I, I really I think agree. We, you know, and, and there are provisions in the law that allow the PUC to sit or have, um, you know, mediators or facilitators or uh, masters, special masters sit uh, with the stakeholders, whoever they may be, on a given issue and, and work it out. Get in a room, close the door, find a solution. Um, and I think the, the whole quasi-judicial notion that was generated back in 1910, no longer applicable. This, thing's mo this thing moves too fast. And frankly, uh, there was a time when we were ahead of, the, ahead of the game on this, maybe ahead of the world on it. I don't think you can say that anymore. We're stuck in our own juices, and we have to find a way procedurally to make this happen. Whatever happens, we have to take the chance, make it happen. Uh, and, you know, 18-month uh, you know, iterations are simply too long. Uh, comment, and then we'll have to close. Yeah, I wish I saw. I wish I saw a way of uh, fast tracking things, uh, Jay. But it just uh, it just doesn't seem to be the nature of our, our of our particular beast. It seems to be kind of our lot that uh, uh, things grind on and take take longer than than they should. In the meantime, uh, consumer choices are limited. PV companies go out of business, and uh, and that, I, I hope that doesn't happen. But it certainly is a concern of mine. So on that cheery note, my Marco, it's wonderful having these discussions with you every other Monday. We learn so much. I learn so much from you. And together, we, we seem to come up with new thoughts all the time. Um, so I hope somebody's listening. I hope you're listening out there. If you are, call us at 415-871-2474 uh, any other Monday at noon, and we'll tell you everything you need to know. Thank you so much, Marco. Here, here, my friend, uh, until the next time, and we will illuminate the darkness or make it even more darker, depending on your point of view. <laughs> Think Tech on energy, illuminating the darkness. <laughs> <laughs>